it's, it's a wide audience, um, so I'm never sure of which background to assume. So please do not hesitate to stop me at any point if I should uh, define something. Um, or, as Moira was saying, if I need to speed up, do let me know. So, um, mapping class groups, big mapping class groups, surfaces. Uh, that's my setup. I have S, which is going to be a surface. So this is going to be connected, orientable, and I'm going to assume without boundary. Uh, but I'm not going to assume anything about, for instance, compactness. So my surface can be of two types, which is of uh, what is called a finite type. So this means that the fundamental group of the surface is finitely generated, but more down to earth, what this means is that it's one of the surfaces we're probably most used to, meaning we take a compact surface of some finite genus, and we can remove finitely many points. It's going to be a surface of genus G and, and punctures. But there's also surfaces that we've actually already seen of infinite type, These are surfaces where the fundamental group is not finitely generated. That means in practice that there's either infinite genus or I've removed infinitely many points. So let me just draw a couple of examples of surfaces that one could consider. There's, for instance, this surface where we have infinite genus going off in one direction. Um, genus could go off in multiple directions. Or I could have finite genus and remove, I don't know, for instance, a sequence of points converging somewhere, or uh, even a counter set. Um, or I can have mixed things. So let me, for instance, draw something like this, for instance, where here I have chimneys of genus. And I have infinitely many of them all going off in one direction. And maybe I've also removed a sequence of points and so on. Um, OK, so there's plenty of these surfaces, meaning that actually up to um, homeomorphism, there's uncountably many. So this is just a couple of examples. And but to any of these surfaces, we can associate the mapping class group. We've already seen, but let's just define it. I have the mapping class group of the surface. This is the group of orientation preserving homeomorphism of the surface up to homotopy. Um, so here I could also change the definition a bit, uh, but remark for those who know what quasi conformal maps are, if you don't, no worries. Um, if I fix x, a uh, hyperbolic structure on S, um, and I assume that it's equal to x convex score, even that, forget about it. Um, what I can look at is what is what I would denote by mod x. It's the group of quasi-conformal uh, maps of the surface up to homotopy. Uh, and the fact is that if I have a surface of finite type, this group and this group coincide. Uh, but for a surface of infinite type, this in general is a much smaller group. Um, so what I'm actually interested in today is really this topological version of the group. Yes? Yes. Yeah, no restriction. no restriction whatsoever on the homeomorphism, which is why you, you get that this is really a much smaller subgroup than this one in general. There's work of Matsuzaki here, if you're interested in uh, the relation between the two groups. He's worked a bit on this, uh, uh, on this stuff. Um, and I will be actually interested in uh, subgroup of this group, which is what is often called the pure mapping class group, 
So this is the collection of mapping classes uh, which fix the ends. So what does this mean? What are ends? In a finite type surface, ends are just the punctures. In general, an end of a surface is a way of going to infinity. And going to infinity means leaving every compact. So if I'm going towards a puncture, this is a point that's been removed, I can walk arbitrarily close, and I'm going to leave every compact of my surface. So these are ends. Um, here, I also have an end. So if I walk in that direction, this is going to give me an end. And there's, a, there's only one end here. Um, here, there's two, because I can go in this direction or in that direction. Um, here, any point I've removed is an end. These are all ends. Um, each of them is an end. So I have a counter set of ends and a sequence of ends accumulating onto one end at the end. Uh, uh, yeah. And here again, I can go to infinity in this direction, in this direction, this direction. I can go close to any of these ones, and I can go to infinity in this direction. Does that make sense? So what I want for the pure mapping class group is I don't want to be able to permute these things. So my homeomorphisms here are going to fix the punctures point-wise. I'm not going to um, uh, swap, swap these two. Here, for instance, I'm not allowed to do the, the map, which is the, the 180 degree rotation. I'm not allowed to switch these two ends. Um, OK, so this is just really a fundamental group when we're interested in studying surfaces. It's really the group, uh, I think of it as really the group of symmetries of my surface. Um, work now, this one. And if I am handed a group, I guess the first question one can ask is how do I generate it? Question. And I'm going to add um, a non-defined word. So what is a good generating set? or the mapping class group, or maybe the pure mapping class group. And what, do I, what do I mean by good? Um, something I would like is I would like to have a description of the elements I'm using to generate the group, and I want these elements to be simple. I want, these ele I want to be able to understand these elements well, to understand how they act, for instance, on my surface. Um, so there's a very good answer in my opinion, to this question in the case of finite type surfaces. This is a theorem uh, due to Dane and Licorice, um, together with the uh, work of Berman. Whoop. And uh, so this tells me that if S is of finite type, And I'm assuming that it has a positive genus. Then uh, the pure mapping class group is generated by a finitely many Dane twists. about non-separating curves. So we've already seen the twists, but let me just remind you what these are. They have my surface. I pick, in this case, a non-separating curve. So I'll, for instance, pick this one. One way of seeing what a Dane twist is, is I cut along this. Then I do a twist here. 
So I rotate this one uh, 360 degrees, and then I glue back. Okay. Of course, now it doesn't seem like anything has happened. So to see, for instance, what happened, as we've already seen, it's, it's good if we look at what happens to the curve that intersects it. This is going to cut up to something like this. And now I twist around it. So what's going to happen? I do this. Then I go around my curve once, and then I go back. And the thing of the twists is that they are relatively easy maps. I, I really know how they act, for instance, on any curve. The curve does not intersect my, my alpha. The Dane twist does not do anything if the curve intersects my alpha. I just need to see what happens around out. Um, and it's enough to have finally many of those. So to me, this is a good answer. And uh, the proof of this fact is actually pretty nice. And uh, I would like to give you an idea of, how, of what this is. Um, and this will show why this fact does not uh, work in infinite type. Let me just do one remark before I talk about the proof, which is, uh, so here I have the pure mapping class group. This is because if I have a Dane twist, this is something that happens on a compact set. There's no way I can permute punctures. Dane twist cannot permute punctures. So I cannot generate the, the mapping class group with Dane twists. Uh, on the other hand, if I'm of, uh, on a surface of finite type, I can just add what are called half twists. Essentially, I take a, a little disk that contains these two punctures, and I rotate it 180 degrees. So it's also a very simple map. Um, so the point is here, I can just add other simple maps called half twists. And I can add finally many to generate the full mapping class group of the surface. Um, OK. So what is the idea of the proof? The proof goes by induction on the genus and the number of puncture. Induction on G. And, N. and to do the induction on n, what we use is what is called the Berman exit sequence. Um, which tells you that if I have, I take a surface and I pick a point on it, I look at the fundamental group of the surface based at this point. I can map this to into the mapping class group of the surface where I fix this point, and this surjects onto the mapping class group of the surface. Okay, so it's not super important what this does, but this is essentially telling me that if I want to understand these, this thing here, I can understand this one, and I can understand this one, and then I can combine the two, and this is going to give me a good understanding of this group in the middle. Um, and the point is that we understand this. So if I have, a, so I have my point and I have an element of my fundamental group, which is going to be a, a, a loop based at this. And if the loop is a simple loop, um, so this map is called the push map. What you should imagine um, this map does is that I have my surface, I have my point x, I put my finger on x, and I follow around alpha until I go back. So it modifies what happens again only around this, this little uh, uh, loop and does nothing far away. But the, the main thing is, even if we don't know what this map does, is what tells us what's important here is that there are two curves that I can get by um, going just to the right or just to the left of, these, of this point here. And I'm going to call A and B. These are curves on my surface where I removed the point X. Um, 
So I can do Dane twists about these, and the point is that the push map of this class is if I up to orientations can be written as a Dane twist. So this is my notation for a Dane twist about a curve. Um, a product of two Dane twists about these two curves. So the, the main idea here is um, I can also okay, use a different color. This sequence also works if I look at pure mapping class groups. So how do I do induction on, on the number of punctures? Here I assume that I know that this is generated by finitely many Dane twists. Um, here I can show that it's generated, so it's enough to look at uh, finitely many loops, and this is going to give me finitely many Dane twists through this map. So I can get finitely many Dane twists for this thing, where I've added a, a puncture. So this gives me the induction on n. Make some sense? Um, and then I need to do induction on the genus. So how do I do that? Um, I use a nice lemma that tells me how I can generate a group if I know how it acts on a combinatorial object. So I have a group G, which acts on a graph, on a connected graph. And I assume that my group acts transitively on um, pairs of adjacent vertices. Anytime I have vertic vertices v1, v2 that are connected by an edge and w1, w2 that are connected by an edge, I assume that there's an element that sends v1 to w1 and v2 to w2. Then I can understand, how I know how to generate this group. So I can pick two vertices in my graph, which are connected by an edge, and I, can, I know by this hypothesis that there exists some element of the group that sends one to the other. This is what just my assumption. Um, then I can generate the group by looking at this map and at the elements that fix the vertex V, which is what is called the stabilizer. Okay, so I can, again, I can reduce somehow. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a, a generating set of this one, and I'm saying I can generate it with one element here and then some other group. And the idea is that um, I want this group to be uh, the mapping class group of some surface of lower complexity. So what, is, what happens here is that I have the, uh, the, uh, the pure mapping class group acts this way on a specific complex, which is called uh, the modified non-separating curve complex. So what is this? this I have vertices. Uh, which are homotopy classes of non-separating curves. And I put an edge between two classes if uh, they um, intersect once. So actually, if I look in the homotopy class, I'm going to find if the smallest intersection I can have is 1. So for instance, if I have this surface, I could get um, alpha to be this and beta to be this. They intersect exactly once, and I cannot remove that intersection by just wiggling around the curve. These two curves are connected. Um, and and the, the, the idea is that the mapping class group acts in this nice way on this complex. So I can pick, so let's say I pick these two, and now I can say that the pure mapping class group of the surface is generated by some element f in the pure mapping class group 
of the surface, which sends some alpha to some beta. Those are joined by an edge. And then the elements that fix alpha. And now, essentially, if I fix alpha, what am I? I'm, I'm just a homeomorphism on the surface where I cut along alpha. So this is an almost true. And so the stabilizer of alpha is roughly, uh, which means up to Dane twist in this case, um, the pure mapping class group of the surface where I remove this curve. And if I remove a non-separating curves, I'm going to reduce the genus. So here again, this is going to give me induction on the genus. And this one I can also um, describe in terms of Dane twists, so I'm good. Any questions so far? So it's not very important for the rest of the talk. It's just that I find that it's a beautiful proof, so I just wanted to talk about it. And um, let me mention a couple of remarks about this theorem that makes this theorem even better. Um, so the first one is that not only I can generate the pure mapping class group by finitely many dent twists about non separating curves. But I can even choose my curves. I know, I know I have nice sets of curves that I can choose, and I know they are going to be OK. So I can uh, choose some explicit collections of non separating curves. I really know exactly, um, I, I really know a generating set for my group. And this was done first by um, a licorice. So I gave a set with, so say here, n equals 0, meaning the surface has no punctures. Then licorice had given an explicit construction of 3g minus 1 curves that are enough. And if I look at the, the, the twists about these curves, I know that I can generate my mapping class group, your mapping class group. And then Humphreys reduced, so actually showed that uh, I can use fewer than these. Actually, it's a subset of these curves. I can just use 2g plus 1. And he also showed that this is minimal. meaning that I cannot generate the pure mapping class group with fewer than these many uh, things. Um, OK, then something else is here. So here, what I'm saying is that pure mapping class group is, in particular, finitely generated. There's more. The pure mapping class group is actually uh, what is called finitely presented. So I can choose finitely many generating elements, and I need finitely many relations to, uh, between these elements, and this is going to tell me exactly what happens. Uh, so this um, done first, but vine rib, uh, and then Gervais. And for at most one function, and then in general. Um, and something else you could wonder how maybe you don't want to generate with ding twists. Um, and you can generate with other elements too. Uh, so you can generate with portion elements. So elements that have finite order in my group, some power identity, or even involution. meaning the elements whose power is the identity, whose, whose uh, square is the identity. Um, so this is unless we are in some specific cases, the genus is 2 and n is, if I'm not mistaken, 5k plus 4. 
for a case some integers. So this was done by Lua. And then there's, uh, so here I think it just said that you can generate with finitely many elements like this. And then there's uh, various people that worked on, on finding how many are necessary. There's work, for instance, of um, um, first one I want to, ah, yeah, Brendel and Farb, that's one I want to mention. Brendel and Farb. Uh, for few punctures, they said that uh, six involutions are enough. Um, there's work of Kasabov. And I think the third one I wanted to Farkmas. Yeah. So there's, there's lots of work that's been done in this. So these allow you to actually um, uh, bring down the number of, of elements you need to, to generate your mapping class. Um, Okay, now so the main uh, goal of the talk is to understand what happens to big mapping class groups. And these are mapping class groups of infinite type surfaces. And the reason why they are called big is that, um, well, gonna come up in a second. Um, besides the fact that the surfaces are big, also the groups are pretty big. So say my S now is of infinite type. Um, well, we could look, as usual, if we can try to push this proof and say something about infinite type surfaces, but as I was telling you, the proof goes by induction on genus and number of punctures. And if I have an infinite type surface, either the genus or the number of punctures are both, both, possibly both are infinite, so that's not really going to work. Cannot do induction. on genus and number of punctures. Okay, there's still maybe some hope that this could be true, this result could be true anyways. Uh, and the fact is that this cannot be true. So if I look at even the pure mapping class group of such a surface, uh, this is an uncountable group. It's not hard to see that this is an uncountable group. While it's countable for a finite type surface, um, in particular, if I have a generating set, so I need to be able to write any, any of my elements by uh, finite length words in finitely many elements, my generating set needs to be uncountable too. And the main thing is Dane twists. So Dane twists correspond to, to curves up to homotopy, and curves up to homotopy can be shown to be um, countable on any infinite type. The collection of Dane twists is countable. There's no way um, that they can generate the pure map. That's Um, okay, and then so something else is I can actually have, so I have my group. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a quotient of the group of homeomorphi of, uh, group of homeomorphism, orientation preserving homeomorphisms. One can put a topology on the set of homeomorphisms. This is what is called a compact open topology. And if you don't remember what that is, and as you, you're like me, you need to check the definition every time. Don't worry, I'm going to tell you how this actually works in a second. Um, so this gives me a topology on the group, on the mapping class group, and in particular, pure mapping class group. So I have a way of saying when, when two elements are, are close to each other, and this topology respects uh, the product. Um, 
And the fact is, if I have a surface of finite type, this topology is going to be the discrete topology. So it, it's not an interesting topology, but it is an interesting topology in this case. This is non-trivial uh, under the assumption that S is a, an infinite type surface. And we can give an, a very concrete description of this topology. So a neighborhood basis. And let's say at the at the identity. So how do I say how wh what elements are what elements close to the identity are? Um, I pick A, which is a, a finite collection. of uh, homotopy classes of simple closed curves. And I look at the set U of A, which is given by the mapping classes, which agree with the identity on these curves. So that fixed this curve. So I, I, and, and here the thing is I need a finite collection. So uh, if I have more and more curves, this is going to define fewer and fewer uh, elements. So these are uh, elements that agree with the identity on a larger and larger set. But I will never be able to find a finite collection um, that describes my entire infinite type surface. So I will never, I'm never going to be able to find, a to find a finite collection so that this one is only the identity. So this is the reason why the topology is not trivial. And then I can, so then th this is what happens around the identity. And if I want any, around any other element, I just multiply by my element. Um, the thing is, once you have this, what you can do is you can speak about, uh, if you have a topology, you can speak about limits. <coughs> so you can speak about what is called um, topological generation. Um, so I have T, uh, a set in my mapping class group. And I say that T topologically generates Um, some subgroup G, maybe gamma, in the mapping class group. If, so formally, I take the group generated by these elements, but this is a, is a, is a space in a topological space, so I can take its closure, and this needs to be gamma. In practice, what does this mean? This means that Elements in gamma can be obtained either as finite products of elements in T or as limits of such elements. Um, so th this could be nice, uh, describing uh, a topological generating set could be interesting. You know that anyways, at least you can get your element as a limit of things you understand, but sometimes I prefer to uh, just have a finite, uh, uh, just just an algebraic generating set. I don't want to be, I don't want to take limits. I don't want to do that. Um, so uh, let me just remark before I tell you something about what is known about topological generation. Um, I can look at special classes. Maybe Peter was thinking about those. But these are elements um, that have compact support. So now forget for a second about the fact that the mapping class group is a quotient. What I'm looking at is I'm looking at homeomorphism that do something non-trivial on a compact set, but then are the identity outside. So for instance, uh, Dane twist is an example of something like this, but I can do something trivial on a small piece of my surface, something non-trivial there, and then nothing 
outside. These are the compactly supported elements. And the fact that they are compactly supported means that these, this gives me a subset, actually a subgroup of the pure mapping class group. If I'm compact, if I act only on something compact, I cannot um, exchange ends, which are by definition things that are outside of any compact. And what can be shown quite easily is that these are actually not the same. So I have elements that don't permute the ends, but that don't have compact support. And again, so I just told you that Dane twists are here. So this is another reason why Dane twists cannot generate the thing, because I know that these two are not the same. So about topological generation, something that's known is the uh, work of Patel and Flamis. Um, which tells you, okay, we know that this one is not the same as this one. Is it the same if I take the closure? If I take limits of things with compact support, can I get anything that's in the pure mapping class group? Um, and the fact is, in general, no. So if I take the compactly supporting and I take the closure, this is equal to the pure mapping class group, if and only if the surface S has at most one non-planar end. So what is a non-planar end? This is an end that is often called the uh, accumulated by genus. So these ones here, for instance, are non-planar ends. All of the points that I've removed are called planar ends. And if uh, there's at least two uh, planar ends, uh, then the pure mapping class group is uh, topologically generated by the compactly supported elements uh, whoops. and what are called specific maps that are called handle shifts. So what is a handle shift? I have, uh, I find in my surface a strip where there's handles attached. So I, I find this piece somewhere in my surface and I shift on the inside and I do the identity outside. So for instance, uh, on the, this two-ended thing there, this could be just a translation um, in one direction, but in general, you can just find this as a subset. You do something like a translation here in the world, then you glue it, you patch it uh, to the identity outside. Um, okay, but so this is, this is actually pretty good. This allows me to say that topologically I can generate this with handle shifts and the twists because the twists are going to generate uh, the compactly supported. But I would like to do something. Uh, with algebraic generation. And so here's a candidate um, set of generators. Um, I mean, the main thing is I like doing twists, so I want to try to use them. So how do I create some uncountable set by looking at doing twists? so that I have a hope of generating my full group. What I get is what I call um, an integral weighted multicurves, which is a fancy name for a collection of curves with weights on them. So I have uh, a collection that could be infinite. This is crucial. These are curves. So these ones here are all uh, are pairwise disjoint. Um, curves, simple closed curves, not accumulating anywhere. Uh, 
Um, so what does that mean? For instance, look at this example. I could choose the curves to be these ones. But I cannot choose the curves to be these ones. And so on. So these are okay, these are not. Here I will have infinitely many curves all intersecting some compact parts, so there will be some accumulation. This is not okay. And then these ni's are integers. And the point is essentially when I do this, if, if my curves don't accumulate anywhere, I can do a Dane twist here and it has nothing to do with the Dane twist there. So what I can construct are what are called multi-twists. So given I'm going to denote tau by tau mu, it's just a, gener uh, just a generalization of this. I take the simultaneous product, which means that on each, on a small annulus around these, these one I do the Dane twist about alpha i to the power n i. Um. Okay, so I do infinitely many, potentially infinitely many Dane twists all at once with as many powers as, with the powers as, as large as I want or as small as I want. And this is a, an uncountable set of, gener uh, an uncountable set of elements of my mapping class group of my, um, they are actually all in the closure of the compactly supported. You can kind of think of them as limits of just taking the product of finally many of these. So these are all elements in this. So the question is, to me, this seems like an absolutely natural set of generators uh, for, for this group. And well, as you can imagine, the answer is they actually don't generate. It took me a while to convince myself, I'll say there was some help from Sebastian. Um, so the main theorem here is possibly a disappointing one. Is that if S is of infinite type, uh, and finite genus, Then um, the collection of Dane twists, of, of multi twists, does not generate um, the, the closure of the compactly supported, which in this case is the same by the theorem I mentioned there as the pure mapping class group. OK, so just uh, to finish, so I was saying this is a talk mainly about questions. To me, this raises a bunch of questions. That the, let me just write three. Um, the first one is, OK, I know this. I have this collection of multi-twists. I have a subgroup generated by them. It's not all of it. Can I characterize the elements that, are, that come up as finite products of multi-twist? So what is the subgroup generated by multi-twists? Some subgroup, not all of it. Um, second thing, here I said that uh, uh, they have this assumption on the finite genus. By now, I, I, I suspect that they don't generate an infinite genus either. But our method of proof does not go through. So we don't know what happens if the genus is infinite. Um, do they generate? Maybe just, just in this surface, can, can we understand if they generate the pure mapping class group or not? And third, possibly. Bigger is, OK, this, this was, to me, an obvious generating set. It isn't. What is a generating set? So what can we use to generate uh, the pure mapping class group or the, or the closure of the, the compactly supported 
um, <coughs> elements. Um, okay, so the, the, the point is, just one word about the proof of this. What we actually do is we construct a specific element, which is here, and is not the product of finitely many multitwists. And somehow the idea there is that this element has infinite complexity, um, while products of multi-twists have somehow bounded complexity. So you cannot write something of infinite complexity as, as a something of finite complexity. And, and to do that, for those who know, uh, we need to we use work of uh, Bespina, Bromberg, and Fujiwara, where we look at, uh, at uh, quasimorphisms. It's just essentially this is, this is work that allows us to construct an element, uh, some, some map that gives us um, a way of measuring complexity. Um, and, and this map will be zero on all multi twists, and it will be uh, infinite essentially on, on our element. Um, and it act, and it, then this map um, works well enough with, with composition of elements that. Uh, and that I know that, uh, that is going to help me certify that my element is not in the product of multi-twists. But I realized this was uh, very quick, but I think it's a good moment to stop, so thank you.